Alright. There we go. They're so bouncy, bouncy, bouncy everywhere. They love their enclosure. I mean, who wouldn't love their enclosure? It's looking absolutely beautiful and amazing. It's super, super, super thick. She does have a fawn inside of her. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video here at the ranch. Today, you guys, we have to get some things done at the beginning of the week. And some of the things I've noticed over the weekend are that my Munjack deer are doing absolutely amazing, except for Rita. Rita is Nutella's first daughter, and she got the flu, she got sick, just like how I did. And the reason why I know she got that is because yesterday she was acting a little weird, and then today I went to go look at her as well. You see, Nutella's nice and perfect, but Rita's in the back over there fluffed up. And because she is fluffed up and it is not cold out, that is a bad sign. I walked around the enclosure as well, and I saw some parts of wet diarrhea. That is a sign of worms or coccidia, most likely. And the reason from that and how that happened, freaking mosquito, is the fact of there's a lot of water that came around. Mosquitoes is a sign of that. When all that rain happened from the flood, this enclosure filled up a little bit and she most likely drank some of that water. They have an automatic watering system that's right here, but because she drank from that water, that water could have had some worms. She got worms in her stomach and her stomach got messed up and that's the reason why she looks like that. So. Normally, what I would normally do is just throw their pellet with a dewormer inside the pellet. So it'd probably be like a safeguard to a diet or safeguard uh, dewormer. You put it with the pellet, mix it, they eat it, no problem, just as a prevention. But because of today's situation, we got hit her twice in a row. I got a towel and I have some panty care and we're gonna have to hit her just like a goat today so we can hit it fast and easy so that she gets it quickly and it kills it quickly so that nothing happens. Normally, like I said, we'll do it with the pellet and they could just go in slowly, but we're gonna have to grab it this way. She is eating. I can see that she's still eating, so that is a good sign. We're gonna try to catch her. Don't know how this is gonna work. My stomach's gonna get really beat up. Cassandra's stomach's gonna get beat up. The why we're gonna say that is because Munjacks have very, very sharp feet and we're gonna try our best. I do not wanna stress her out because then that all could do is make the worms go a lot more crazier and get her you know, round it up and it's stretch her out more, which wouldn't be good. But if I hit her with this panic air, it will help her a lot and it could save her. It's pretty much our main thing. Worms are a very, very a bad thing for animals and it's not too, too, too well. Good sign though about Nutella. If you guys can see her right now, she is actually pregnant again and she has a mosquito on her ear. Look at that mosquito right there. Nice, beautiful. She does have a fawn inside of her. So hopefully in the next, I don't know, maybe in about a month, she'll have another fawn on the ground. If it's a girl, it'll stay here. If it's a boy, we'll probably rehome it. You guys can see the Japanese trees are completely girdled. We're gonna have to cover those guys up because Peanut in the background screwed them all up. Come here, that is a big mosquito. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> no, but it will fill the blood. Oh my goodness, that was a big mosquito. All right. Might be able to just corner her right there. Let's go see if we could go grab her real quick. We're gonna put the camera down and let you guys know some feedback in a second. All right, so we tried to get her with the towel, but unfortunately it didn't work as planned. I'm gonna keep a great eye on her and see how it goes. We have their food right here and it has a mixture of their dewormer inside of this pellet. So hopefully we can see right here, like this right here is dewormer and then there's regular food in there. So it's all mixed up inside of there. So everybody's gonna get dewormed inside of here. I'm gonna have the baby come over here now. So hopefully she'll start eating this. Keep a big eye on her and hopefully she starts eating. Eats the dewormer, that's all we need. We're hit with three days of this. And then about seven to 14 days, seven days, we'll hit him again with uh, another thing of dewormer. So yeah. See this thing? You see that one over there? You see that one over there? Yeah, they're all getting freaking caught and getting thrown back inside of their goat area. They have more than plenty room over there. We have a section designed just for them. There's no need for them to be over here. So we're gonna capture them all as soon as we're done feeding the aviary. But first, before the aviary, we're gonna do the cast orders. All right, so it looks like today's raspberries, oranges, apples, plums, bananas, and uh, that is about it. Oh, and pears. Uh, quick thing, you guys. We're about to do their enclosure this coming week. So I need your help with two things. One, what other plants and bushes would you guys like to see and trees would you guys like to see for the cassowaries? Inside of this part right here is absolutely any, nothing we're keeping. 
The other side, we have a hibiscus, a mulberry, a cherry tree, a sea grape tree, and a guava tree. And a papaya tree that they're gonna destroy in 20 seconds. What other trees would you like to see? I'm thinking a mango tree. But then when the fruits drop, it's gonna be a lot of big seeds dropped around and it's gonna be hard for them to eat it. I want a fruit trees that they can just swallow the fruits whole so it's very easy for them to forage around and a lot, lot simpler for them. Put it down in the comments what you think. Let's go feed the aviary. That's one, six more to go. And that's two. All right, we got a couple more to go. That's good. Oh, look, look, look. Freakers down there, you don't see them, but they're running fast. They're like, oh Lord. What's happening? So listen, they have the whole goat section here and they can go underneath the fence towards the cow section and have a whole other acre over there. Plenty of room. They don't need to come on this side. Crackheads of birds is the definition in here. The trumpeters, the taracos. The taracos are absolutely whoa there, cowboy. They are so crazy all the time. They eat so much, and it's super, super funny. Hold up. They love their all the different types of cut stuff. They're so bouncy, bouncy, bouncy everywhere. They love their enclosure. I mean, who wouldn't love their enclosure? It's looking absolutely beautiful and amazing. It's super, super, super thick. And I mean, it looks great. Look like all the ducks. Even all the ducks are over here just living their best life. They're looking great. Uh, their duck food, waterfowl diet. And then they have a little bit of mixed corn and pellet in there. That's, uh, you know, what they love to eat. Make sure you guys are getting your aviaries ready. Make sure you guys are getting your enclosures ready because waterfowl season is coming soon. And these guys are all going to be having babies very, very, very soon. And it's going to be really cool for you guys to have some and for me to have some more offspring. The water has completely retreated a lot in the last week and a half. As you can see, we still had the blue tube out. You can see where the tube was at where the water level was at. It has gone down a lot. Moors and Benny are eating all of the nice fresh grass that has been cut down. The water is really, really low. I haven't been able to take the piping out yet because of the fact of I've been really, really messed up with my stomach. Unfortunately, we found out I had some type of like bacteria in my stomach and it was no bueno at all. I was inside, I was messed up, it hurt, it didn't feel well, but I'm back to normal, ready to go for time to start getting things done here at the ranch because that week was the week we were supposed to do the cassowary enclosure but unfortunately woo, something jumped out of the water it was uh not the time for me to do that but all the fish look great there is still a ton a ton a ton of of those freaking tilapia you can see the whole school swimming right there that we're gonna have to take out very soon if it stops raining for real this time for winter and the water drops down the very very low mark to the lowest lowest mark that i have to start filling it up again then we're going to put the pump in there and we're going to drain everything out and we're going to take out all of the fish we don't want so stay tuned for that we're not going to do it anytime soon because the water's still high and there's no point of draining the water and fighting with the water tables when just get let mother nature do its thing when we want to so it'll be really really cool all the turtles inside of here look great we have to fix the shade cloth on here still which is simple and easy just zip tying it up back to the top, getting it all going. A little bit of maintaining has to get done inside of here. But other than that, the aviary looks great. I mean, just look how thick it absolutely looks. I mean, it is outstanding. It is beautiful. Uh, I definitely would like to put some type of dove inside of here is kind of what I'm thinking I'm gonna do. Let's have a pigeon dove situation. Probably more of a dove, not a pigeon like a fruit dove, probably a fruit dove, I'm not too sure. The starlings and all those things are very cool, but probably not gonna do it. I'm probably gonna go for a dove species. They're kind of my thing. So I think I'm gonna try to find a dove species, talk to a couple of my buddies and see what would be the best for this size enclosure. One pair of doves inside of here, a bright color species would be really cool. Other than that, let's go catch these freaking chickens. <laughs> I 
I got this fat man. Bye bye. Stay over there. I oh, know these guys are going too. I don't give a fuck and flat jacks. There is plenty of room over there. Woo! -hoo! <laughs> Woo! Woo! -hoo! <laughs> That was a fast chicken. I ain't gonna lie. That was a fast chicken. All right, there they go. <laughs> There's poop everywhere. Like, they have plenty of space over there. Stay over there. Oh, that white one. <laughs> Silkies and all. It's pretty. Yeah, pretty. It's pretty over there. The corner. only squad that's allowed to stay here is that little squad right there. That one rooster and his nine girlfriends. There's one over here. I hear him. I hear him too. Nope. Oh. Lunatic man. It's the hallway of trouble. <laughs> Got him. Look at those freaking knives on this thing. Should have just ate you for Thanksgiving. Is that a turkey? <laughs> Fly! All right, perfect. Let's go see my feed. Morning. What are you feeding him? Nice. Nice. Yeah, a little closer. He's down there in his jungle. It's crazy how fast that stuff grows back. I think he's nervous. Camera shy? Camera shy. We're gonna make sure they're dead first. So Marty is eating, I think we went over this before, he's eating what, two mice in the morning, if not maybe two mice in the afternoon. And if it's not two mice in the morning and afternoon, on top of that, then he gets like six, seven day old quail. And then if it's not that, he's getting like six, seven chicken hearts. But he gets twice a day, two of those meals, something of that diet. All right, let's see what's going on over here. I don't know, you might not be hungry for two. Not for two? Not sure, he's looking at me. Hi, come here. Hi, come here. We haven't talked about this guy a lot. We'd walk by him a lot, but Big G is growing. It is absolutely insane how big this flipping guy has gotten. It is crazy. He's living his best life. He's walking around the ranch, just doing what he does best, being a turtle, eating grass. Tortoise. Tortoise, get, get it right. Look, you're wearing one. Yeah. Old school. And um, he's just doing what he does the best, just living life. Uh, the deers look like they have eight already, so that is good. Quick little update. Let's see what else looks like. Let's, make, let's see if they ate everything. How about that? Looks like the flies have our, is like in the apples too, the fruit flies, but that's okay. There's still some food left over. Rita doesn't look like... Oh, no, no. I think she did eat something. She's licking her lips, and she just did a little bit of mouth chewing thing. That's good. Yesterday, she looked really, really down. Today, she looks a lot better, actually. So hopefully now, she'll start eating some of this, and that will help a lot. And I know it came from the water. It happens all the time with the goats. As you guys know, the goats have a lower area, and it happens. So when there's water, a lot of water, they could get sick. All right, we just collected 600 day old quails that just hatched out. We have another 600 more that are hatching at this second, but we're gonna put them all inside of the brooder right now to start raising up. This is for Blake's exotic feeders. I know this video is all over the place, but it's Monday and that's how Mondays are here at the ranch. They're absolutely all over the place. And we're pretty much showing you guys what's going on from the beginning to just the beginning of the morning because <laughs> the whole day is crazy. That's my mom. Is it gonna be crazy? Oh, yeah, and today's cleaning day also. Yeah, so they're, they're And Christmas tree day. Oh, Christmas tree day. Yeah. And I still have to go run and get more stuff. Oh, and I gotta get feed. So don't worry, it's gonna be a long day, but this is just for the today, and the video's going up today too. So here we go. 600 birds entering the house. All right, hold on. Put that cap on there. And here we go. There you go, you guys. Let's raise all these guys up. Unfortunately, Everybody has to eat, and these guys are going to raise up for everybody's animals' needs. For anything, you guys. I mean, everything eats these guys uh, from birds of prey, crocodilians, turtles and tortoises, lizards, snakes, all sorts of stuff. It's just like eating chicken. Exactly what my mom just said. 
So these guys will all be here for just about one week and then they'll move on and get separated to a bigger size. So they have more space and more space because it's too many in one enclosure. They stomp on top of each other and then they're not able to eat and then they look like poop. So we grow them, we raise them, they get moved, 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 and moved to the next section, to whatever section we need. And then they get bagged and freeze and go to the new homes, to the animals' bellies. So everybody get eats. And that's the way of Mother Nature's food chain goes right there. So you guys are interested in Blake's and Gotta Feeders, DM me on Instagram. We have all your quail needs. We have five different sizes available and in 2024 coming soon. I know my mom's not gonna like this one, but we're gonna have to do it because a lot of people have been asking me. We're gonna have eggs available for you guys, but they're gonna be the quail inside of the egg. And it's gonna be a little bit more work, but people like them, the monitors like them, the snakes like them, and a lot of things like them. Uh, I don't really understand the reason for them. There may be a little bit more calcium, but eh, why not? Everybody looks great. They just came out of the brooder and they're already eating their feed. They have their light on and here comes their waters. Here you go, you guys. One water there and another water here. There you go, you guys. I put another one in there. Yeah. All right, let's go pick up another 600. All right. There you go. Perfect. Other than that, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video here at Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, put your post notification on. It's the end of November, December is coming soon. Make sure you guys go check out the website. We are still having sales available at blakesexoticanimalranch.com with all of our turtles that we have available. If you need any tortoise food like cactus, especially the people that are in states that it snows and you can't have or grow anything, I got plenty of cactus available. We can ship it to you guys. It's great tortoise food uh, grown here at the ranch. And other than that, have a happy holidays. See you guys in the next one. And peace out, everybody.